Hello, my rubber heart. Welcome back to another episode of My Rubber Heart. I'm Mari, and today we are diving deep into the fascinating world of sweeping, specifically how rubber and other polymers have shaped the sport, revolutionized competitive swimming, and led to some pretty intense debates in the world of athletics. Have you ever wondered how those super sleek swimsuits came to be, or why some of the best swimmers in the world use certain tricks with their swimwear? Well, today we're going on a journey through time and explore how materials like rubber and polymers have evolved in swimming, how they've helped athletes push the boundaries of performance, and how regulations have changed to keep the sport fair. Swimming has been part of the modern Olympic Games since they began in 1896, but the swimwear of the early 20th century was a far cry from what we see today. Back then, swimmers wore wool or cotton suits, materials that absorbed water and increased drag, making swimming much more difficult. But as the sport grew more competitive, so did the need for better swimwear. It wasn't until the 1920s and 1930s that the first rubberized swimsuits made their appearance. These suits were made from rubber-coated fabrics, which were far more hydrodynamic than wool or cotton. This was a game-changer, allowing swimmers to move through the water with less resistance. But it wasn't just about speed. These early rubber suits also improved buoyancy, giving swimmers a subtle edge in the water. However, these suits were not without their drawbacks. They were often heavy, uncomfortable, and difficult to put on, limiting their widespread use at the time. As technology advanced, so did the materials. By the 1950s and the 1960s, the use of synthetic rubber and other polymers became much more common in swimwear. The introduction of latex swim caps in the 50s, for example, marked a significant shift. These caps were lighter and more flexible than their predecessors, providing better comfort and a snug fit that minimized drag. Fast forward to the 1980s and 1990s and we see the real technological boom in swimwear. This era marked the introduction of materials like lycra or spandex and elastan, which are polymers known for their stretchability and form-fitting properties. These materials, often combined with rubber or silicone for added compression and hydrodynamics, led to the creation of swimsuits that clung to the body like a second skin. During this time, the use of full-body swimsuits began to gain popularity. These suits were made with a combination of lycra and polyurethane, which is a type of polymer that is both lightweight and hydrophobic, meaning it repels water. These suits not only reduced drag, but also helped in muscle compression, reducing fatigue during long races. Swimmers also began to adopt more sophisticated tricks with their gear during this period. For instance, the use of two sweepsuits became a common strategy to enhance buoyancy and reduce drag even further. The idea was that the outer suit would compress the inner one, creating a smoother profile in the water. This trick, combined with the introduction of rubberized goggles and more advanced swim caps, gave swimmers every possible advantage. Then came the 2000s, a decade that saw swimming technology reach unprecedented heights. The Sydney 2000 Olympics were a turning point for swimming, thanks to the introduction of the full body suit, often referred to as super suits. These suits were primarily made from polyurethane, with some designs incorporating neoprene, a synthetic rubber for added buoyancy and water resistance. These full body suits offered an incredible advantage. Not only did they reduce drag and enhance buoyancy, but they also supported the swimmer's muscles, improving endurance and reducing fatigue. The results were astonishing. Swimmers wearing these suits started breaking world records at an unprecedented rate. The results were astonishing. Swimmers wearing these suits started breaking world records at an unprecedented rate. At the 2008 Beijing Olympics, nearly 25 world records were shattered, leading many to dub these suits as performance enhancers. But the success of the suits also sparked controversy. Many in the swimming community began to question whether the suits gave an unfair advantage, essentially turning the competition into a battle of the best technology, rather than the best athletes. 
This controversy led FINA, the International Swimming Federation, to take action. In 2009, after witnessing an overwhelming number of world records being broken, FINA introduced new regulations that banned full-body polyurethane suits in competitive swimming. The new rules mandated that men's swimsuits could only extend from the waist to the knee and women's suits from the shoulder to the knee. Additionally, the materials used had to be textile-based, effectively ruling out the use of full-body suits made entirely of polyurethane or similar materials. This was a significant moment in swimming history. The ban on full body suits marked a return to a focus on the athlete's skill rather than technological enhancements. But it didn't mean the end of innovation in swimming attire. Far from it. In the years following the ban, the focus shifted towards finding a balance between innovation and fair play. Today's competitive swimsuits are still made from advanced polymers like Lycra and Elastan, but they adhere to strict guidelines to ensure that all athletes compete on a level playing field. The swimsuits you see in competitions today are highly engineered to offer the best possible performance within the rules. They are designed to compress the body, to reduce drag and provide muscle support, but without the extreme buoyancy and drag reduction offered by the band full body suits. Swimmers continue to use tricks to gain an edge, such as wearing two swim caps, one over the hair and another over the goggles to keep them in place. The use of rubberized goggles has also evolved, with designs that minimize drag and provide a secure, watertight fit. Additionally, advanced silicone-based swim caps have become the norm, offering a smooth, hydrodynamic surface that reduces resistance in the water. Outside of competitive swimming, in events like open water swims or triathlons, wetsuits made from neoprene are still widely used. These wetsuits provide buoyancy, thermal insulation, and protection from the elements, making them essential for endurance swimming in cold water. The neoprene panels are strategically placed to lift the swimmer's body, reducing drag and improving efficiency. Even with all these regulations, swimmers continue to find ways to optimize their gear. Let's recap some of the tricks that they use. The double suiting. Some swimmers still wear two suits, particularly in training, to increase resistance and build strength. While not allowed in competition, this trick helps swimmers feel faster than when they race in a single suit. The two swim caps. Wearing two caps remain a popular tactic. The first cap flattens the hair, while the second cap, usually made of silicone, holds the goggles in place and further reduces drag. Customized fitting. Competitive swimmers often have their suits custom fitted or tailored to ensure a perfect fit. This reduces any chance of wrinkles or loose fabric which could increase drag, anti-chafing and hydrophobic sprays. Some swimmers apply silicone-based sprays to their suits to prevent chafing and reduce drag. These sprays create a slick surface on the suit, helping water bead off more quickly. Rubberized goggles and low-profile designs. Modern goggles are made with rubber or silicone seals that provide a secure fit. Some goggles are also treated with anti-fog and mirrored coatings to maintain clear vision and reduce glare. Kinesiology and compression tapes. Though not always visible, some swimmers use kinesiology tape made from polymers to support muscles and joints. Compression tape can also be used to enhance muscle endurance and reduce swelling. So, my rubber heart. As you can see, the use of rubber and polymers in swimming has come a long way. From the early rubberized suits that started it all, to the high-tech polymer suits in the 2000s, and now to the regulated yet still innovative swimwear of today, these materials have played a crucial role in shaping the sport. While regulations have been put in place to ensure fairness, the quest for the perfect combination of materials and design continues. Swimmers and manufacturers alike are always looking for the next big innovation that can offer an edge, within the rules of course. Thanks for tuning in to this deep dive into the history of rubber and polymers in swimming. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. Until next time, keep swimming strong and remember, stay buoyant my rubber hearts.